For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Walls Outdoors with me, Mike. Some of you guys a bit of a review video on a tent from Outwell. So with me here today, I've got the Outwell Knoxville 7SA. So the Knoxville is a model that's kind of been uh, sort of introduced into 21. In 22, we kind of see it remain in the range, uh, but kind of has a few more updates for the new season. The design and concept of this really stems back to the classical kind of Vermont 7SA. Um, but rather than say, sort of SA mean kind of smart air, it now means superior air. So the joys of the superior air is that you've got the smart air kind of concept where you've got sort of um, beams going across and then also brace beams in the roof. But now it's all done individually. It's still quite quick and easy to pitch. You can see from my own Atwell's pitching packing video, it took me no longer than about sort of 14 minutes to pitch the whole thing. For a quite a big tent, that's pretty decent, especially when it's just me on my own. Each beam's done individually and you can obviously uh, get a valve point which is on the other side of the tent, which you can inflate it, and then you insert the brace beams afterwards. And like I said, that way you've got a little bit more support across from the sort of the width, as well as on from front to back, so it works really well. For 22, we see them use a really nice, so they've upgraded the fabric to a ripstock material. So it's now a 6,000 mil ripstock fabric, about 150D. So it's a really nice material, robust, and designed to sort of last. Having that really sort of element to it is really quite nice as well. If you have a little nick, so that's going to be isolated at a single point rather than carrying on tearing and sort of furthering the damage. As we expect that, well, we've got these really nice kind of crystal clear windows, uh, but also they are tinted, so you can get a bit of privacy even when the curtains are down. If you want that ultimate amount of privacy, then you would zip the curtains up, uh, and again, it gives you the flexibility to, to offset about light versus uh, enclosing what you want to. We also is worth mentioning that when you look from the tinted windows, you can't really see, it's more seen outlines and shapes rather than physical detail. So it does work to a certain extent. Not only have you got the brace beams running on the roof, but you've also got storm straps front and back in the main points to give you great torsion in there and a bit more stability as in you see needed. We've got this kind of floating guard line system. So it's a, obviously kind of highlights where uh, the most hazardous points are for tripping over while still giving a bit of stability to the tent. I quite like how it matches kind of a little trim. So it's, it's sort of quite very thought out kind of detail wise. It's a quite a large tent admittedly and it's certainly in three zones. So you've got kind of sleeping, your living and then kind of a very generous kind of front awning section. Great interior height. So again, you've got kind of like gothic arc kind of system. So it does feel quite spacious in there and it's kind of designed to be a little bit more boxy uh, than a normal kind of curved model just to kind of increase internal space. I mean, you can put furniture and stuff a bit closer to the edge. The one thing I do like about that is kind of the level of features you've got, the small little details in it. So things like your little Velcro retainers for all the guide points. You've got um, ability to add an extension onto it as well by attaching onto a canopy. Uh, and even the ventilation in here is, I think is quite crucial. It's worth mentioning you've got low level ventilation beneath pretty much all the windows. So you've got a really nice airflow in there to help circulation there and keep it a little bit cooler and certainly help kind of ward off condensation or even help fight it at least. But finally, you can also zip them up. So it, unlike most, you've got a physical zip on the underside so you can properly seal up if you want to. For me, you want to keep it all open, but it's a, a little touch and a little bit of thing probably you wouldn't really realize from, the, well, sort of off the bat to be fair. <laughs> Not only have you got sort of ventilations down by the window sections, there's one also one by the bedroom section as well. And that's probably more crucial than ever, especially if you've got lots of condensation and you'll be sleeping in there, you'll get a lot of moisture coming out from when you're uh, sleeping throughout the night. We've got two doors on either side, both of a really nice mesh. The one on this side here has got this little rain safe canopy door, so you can walk in and out of here into the main living area, regardless of whether it's raining or not, so the water's gonna beat down and go away from the door. So that's a good thing to note. We've also got another rear ventilation point at the back as well, um, which is, Again, it can be adjustable. We'll come to that a bit later on in the video. Other things to mention is all the kind of points along the bottom are kind of webbing straps, so you can kind of peg them and get a little bit of adjustment on them. And the actual brow pole here is kind of actually kind of an aluminium pole rather than fiberglass. And it's those sort of things that reflect necessarily in the price. From the front side of things, we've got this really big kind of nice open door. The door itself uh, is enclosed, as you can see. It can be rolled from left to right or right to left, depending on how you want to set it up. For me, I'm always a bit more a fan of going from right to left and then creating a little bit of a dead space in here, allowing your corridor to be inside. 
because you've got essentially four zip pullers on the front door, you can actually create like a little veranda kind of style. So you can leave the zip to pull on the bottom, open the top bar up. This is where, because of the slight slope on there, it's a little easier to do from the inside. But you can see there, you create a little veranda, have airflow in, keep the dogs and the kids necessarily inside the tent as well. Failing out, what we can do, we'll re-zip that back up. And we'll take it back over. So you can again open this up kind of halfway. On each side, you've got kind of toggle points located here to wrap around the actual door when it rolls backwards. So we'll zip this front part completely up initially. It's almost worth mentioning as well that you've got curtains completely in this kind of front section as well. So, which you again don't see with an awful lot of models. It means you can get, you can hide all your cooking and stuff, or if you want to leave the campsite, you can zip everything up out of sight, out of mind. And then what I've done actually now, if you don't want to actually roll it into kind of a heap on the one side, I personally quite like doing lazy man's scenario of just kind of unpegging it, and then kind of just folding it into the corner. Because what that does, it always gives you a kind of an open canopy kind of effect. So it sort of hasn't got a big bulge on the side. And it's a little bit streamlined, more streamlined for the actual kind of uh, open front section as well. But I'll tell you what, let's have a little, little look inside the Knoxville and talk for a load more features that it has to offer. So now we kind of swung ourselves around to the front of Knox, so you can kind of appreciate the, the sheer kind of size in this sort of front awning section. The joys of this many ways is that actually, to be fair, not only you've got a great width, but it's also good depth is there. Now. So you can have sort of a, a storage unit or a cooking table and sort of have your burners in here. Once you keep that front door open, you've got a circulation there, especially using gas, that obviously will be quite crucial. But for me, I do really quite like it. You know, you have that sort of zip up curtains on the side and then toggles up, up curtains on the front section. I think it works really nicely. If you want a ground sheet for this front section as well, you can also buy the footprint, which kind of comes out underneath actually toggles up a little bit to kind of give a bit more of a bathtub kind of feel. So that's another reason to sort of look to buy the footprint itself. Now, throughout the tent, we've got, um, you know, like I said earlier on, bracer beams run through the roof. So these actually kind of insert in afterwards, give a bit of stability, but help to get that roof looking really nice and taut and certainly help with the water draining off. Into the main section here, we've got a divisional door between kind of the front awning section and the main living area. Now, a new feature for 22 is the fact that they've, put at Wells kind of quick and quiet door on this do feature as well. So it means you can kind of come and go as you please without having to open these zips. So you can basically come in and enter the door to a certain sense will kind of close behind you. So there's a little bit of magnets essentially just bring themselves together. Immediately I'd say for me it works better on the, uh, the sleeping door. For me I think if you had a solid and it came back to it I think it flows better. Dog's fine, he likes to come in and out. But when you've got two parts coming together, I think it's a little bit trickier. If you don't want to use that kind of function, for me, you don't have to. The joys of it is there's a zip located behind it, so you can zip that up completely. So what you'll find is, you wouldn't even know it's there. You can then open the door sort of from right, uh, open to left. Because you've got, you essentially... <laughs> you can't do it much. No, no, this way. <laughs> So because you've got your kind of mesh part directly here, um, you've still got airflow obviously into the actual uh, tent as well. So that's your sort of first bug barrier from the front side. We've talked about you've got two doors either side, but it's quite nice having that door at the front. If you want that um, privacy, you have still got some kind of zip curtains located here as well. So you can just quite literally, very simply, zip them up. You've got that, stop the airflow directly in, uh, but also gives you that element of privacy. And you can also do it halfway as well, which is really quite nice. And that goes to the same kind of for all of the uh, windows uh, in the tent itself. And then when you don't want it, you can just nearly roll it and toggle it into its own kind of little point slash pocket down the bottom here. So if we're going to use this like a normal door, we can roll that zip back to there. There's also then a really nice strong zip located on the underside of things. So we can bring that door back halfway, roll it back, there's a retainer point here, and use it conventionally. Failing that, open up fully. And again, that will kind of roll back again. Just do a bit of a fresh job initially. 
and then you can toggle that back out of the way to really help to open the kind of living area and bring it into that kind of canopy section. And you've got this kind of flat lip running in. Small details like I talked about earlier, there's a little bit of tape, um, sort of PVC that runs under the zip point here and that's to stop the mud getting into the zip again to stop, you know, give a bit more longevity. So it's the small things like that they really have thought about with the tent. Now we're in the kind of the main kind of front living section, you can see it's very spacious, you know, I'm about six foot two. From headroom point of view, it's not quite as, say, boxy as maybe something like the Vango models, but you can appreciate, you know, it helps to give a bit of a kind of structural point to it. But the tinted windows for me is a really nice little bonus. And then with the ventilation beneath the windows, flat circulation has got a big, big help as well. We've got the brace beams in the roof section, but there's loads of room here for tables and chairs. Uh, and you can always buy like a little pop-up bedroom to put in the main living area if you want to have an extra guest or two. As we come into the back section, we're looking at a nice big seven here. So we've got essentially a two, three, and a two. Really, I see it being more of like a two, two, and two, or a two, one, and one. Uh, depends, you know, it's a seven berth. I think that's a bit unrealistic, if you ask me. To be fair, it's more truly a six, uh, or a very comfy four or five. This is going to be a master bedroom because it's the biggest, so for the adults it's ideal. Have a little bit more room for kind of like the camp beds and air beds. Again, you've got a quick and quiet feature built onto this door. So again, it kind of helps itself to being kind of the main master bedroom because you can come and go on a night without having to open a zip and hopefully waking up the kids. But for me, because you've got a solid point, it actually physically shuts behind you. And then again, you haven't got that kind of noise of a zip, but it works a lot better as I was kind of referring to in the front panel. Really nice big kind of mesh panel built into it as well. So, and both, all of the bedrooms have that as well to keep the airflow quite nice and neatly. If you don't want to go down lines, you can still, again, use it as a conventional door. So now I do give you the option where you can kind of pick and choose when you want to use the quirky features or be a bit more of a traditionist and just use it conventionally. We can roll that back. We're going to keep that neat and tidy now. We've got kind of like a darker tint to the bedrooms. So it's designed to hopefully sort of make you not wake up as early. Uh, other things to sort of note is that you've also got um, zip dividers between the sections. So it's zipped down the sides, and merely not at the bottom, but on the sides they give you a sort of a feel of a kind of individual inners. They can obviously zip up to make this one big open space. Thing that you can make it like a five and a two and a two and a five, depending on what you want to do, use for storage and so forth. There's a slight bit deeper depth in here as well, which is basically more going to accommodate camp beds or kind of high-rise air beds. And the way it's shaped at the back is definitely more boxier. Again, it's to mean that when you've got something higher, it can go further back rather than kind of hitting the slope at the back here. There's a rear vent as well that mirrors on the vent on the outside, so you can always get visibility out the back into the bedroom, but then privacy when you wanted to. So that's a really nice thing. And also you've got bedroom pockets. So not only you've got bedroom pockets located on the front, of the inner vent, but you've also got it in the kind of the back sides as well. And we've got a cable entry point even going into the inner bedroom there to kind of help. In fact, let's pick the camera up and kind of come inside the vent. So, as we come in, we'll kind of turn and look at that kind of canopy depth. So there's a really good sort of depth there, you know, more than happily for anything you want to put in there. There's storage pockets built into kind of the front panels, not only on the left, but also on the right. So that's going to help you kind of declutter your main part of the tent. As we come in, we can see that low-level ventilation above kind of the window is suited. There's a cable entry point on both sides at the same point down in the corner there as well. So you've one to the right and again also one to the left. You've got the benefit of Outwell's hook track system. So there's the ability of having a hanger point off kind of a little bit of beading. So you use it like a kind of a, a clothesline kind of hanging point, anchors it down. You have a hanging point for a lantern pretty much anywhere along the beam. Uh, and even if you want to have little saber lights, bring it down to your cable entry point. So every single beam uh, kind of in the main living area has that feature. And again, we can see those bracer beams in that roof section as well. Living area wise, again, great sort of space, plenty of room kind of where you, wherever you want to be. Loads of floor room as such. Mesh doors to the left and then also to the right. So again, that means you can have a, a living area completely bug free. Uh, and as we come swing ourselves back round to the bedroom section, so you can see the master bedroom there, and almost kind of a little bit of a shape of it uh, to get that deeper depth. And then you've got a two berth on either side. And you can choose to have the vent kind of open like I have there, or shut it down to get that level of privacy. 
curtains positioned at uh, sorry storage pockets positioned at the back uh, and then obviously you've got the zip points between it all It's also worth actually this cable entry point on both sides. You've got one on the left and one on the right in the bedroom section as well. So that's also quite a nice thing. But then beam wise, you know, you've got kind of slightly oversized beam, which works well. As we kind of come out and we'll kind of a little walk around to have a look at that rear ventilation, but you can see how kind of really nice and open it is. And as I mentioned before, if you want to make it bigger, you can buy an additional canopy, uh, universal canopy at the front to go again. Brow door, like I said, that allows a little airflow into the tents. And those rear vent, uh, sort of low level vents out with the airflow. And I've opened up this big air vent at the back here as well. That's kind of just to show you how big it can be and get that circulation on the warm day. It can be toggled up like I have here, then that can be zipped directly down or brought out uh, and give a little bit of ventilation while retaining kind of its waterproofness. Storm straps located on the back as well, helps to keep it nice and roof taut. That twinned up with the brace beams, get that roof looking ever so sharp. We also can see a little bit how kind of flat the back of it is, and that's going to help with that internal bedroom scenario. Uh, and as we come back around the centre, it's pretty much business as usual. Only with this side that hasn't got that rain safe canopy door, so you're going to sort of favour the uh, to the left as we're looking at it now, if you want to kind of come in and go, and go as you please when the weather does turn a little bit. For more information, of course, you're more than welcome to check the link below this video. It'll take you straight through to our website. We've got more information on things like pack sizes, pack weights, floor dimensions, individual features um, listed and itemized for you so, so you can kind of compare and contrast them with other models that's on the market. Um, but all in all, it was a very popular tent for 21. I think the new additions to 22 with the ripstop material, the quick and quiet door admittedly isn't that much a bonus in my personal opinion, but all other aspects of it I think tick a lot of boxes. You know, it's a good spec, it's not necessarily cheap, but you do pay for what you get. So yeah, but like I said, by all means to check the link below. Feel free to let us know any thoughts or comments you have about it. It's worth always checking our package deals we've got on the Knoxville, uh, as sometimes there's a good ability to save by buying things in kind of like a bundle deal. But all in all, nice tents, good spec, plenty of talking points more importantly. Uh, but yeah, that is the uh, Outwell Knoxville 7SA for the 22 season.